My name is Juan Francisco, and I'm a psychic medium and tarot card reader. I've always been curious about the supernatural, the paranormal, and psychic abilities, and I'm here to share my stories and interview folks who want to share their own stories with us. Let's get to it. We are halfway through spooky season with spooky specials for a third eyesight. I don't know what hand movement I'm doing on camera, and it looks weird, and I'm not going to do it again. Disregard that, YouTubers. All right, so I want to talk about my favorite spooky destinations that I've been to so far in my lifetime. And it was hard to nail this down to just three of them because I thought about including Key West, Florida. I ended up not including it because it is a very, Key West is a very special place. It is really neat. But I did, I decided to place it with another location that was absolutely bonkers for me in terms of supernatural vibes. I'm going to leave that one for last. So you're going to have to listen to the whole episode to get to the most bizarre place I've been to supernaturally. But first up, I want to start with, and I have done an episode on this place, Savannah, Georgia. Are there any Savannah, Georgia listeners or any Georgia listeners for Third Eye Sight? If there are, please give me a shout out in an Instagram DM or an email. I want to know whether you're in the state of Georgia or not in the United States. So Savannah, Georgia has a very, very special place in my heart. I have thought of moving there in the future. Um, It's one of the places I am considering for the future. I went as a teenager with my family and it was a very cool spot. And I even, I think we even did a, yeah, we did a ghost tour at a house. So we saw some historic spots. And I went as an adult on my own a couple years ago, and it was absolutely special. I had the I had the privilege of being there for four nights, <clears throat> and um, it just has this gorgeous haunted vibe to it. <laughs> it is so historic. It is one of the m- major locations um, for Civil War history, and that means there was a lot of death in Savannah. And so you could call Savannah one big graveyard. Then you have the mossy trees. And you have the old buildings. And these beautiful town squares of lush greenery. And beautiful fountains. And a really lovely riverfront with old cobblestones. And pubs. And delicious southern food am i making you want to go to savannah georgia yet because i want to go back immediately i really want to go back next year in 2025 i did a paranormal investigation investigation tour at the sorrel weed house as well as at the savannah theater and both were great but i have to say the savannah theater was a very 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 memorable experience not because anything particularly spooky happened or nothing jumped out at me nothing wild happened and that's the other thing i was battling between god no no pun intended i was battling between savannah georgia key west and gettysburg pennsylvania to fill this first slot and these are in no particular order not like this is the top number one or the bottom third i just wasn't sure which three places to pick based on the places I've been to that which have all, have all been really great. But I chose Savannah and I left Gettysburg off of this list only because Savannah, Georgia, as well as another city I'm going to mention in a bit, it's one of the few places I've been to where everywhere I go, there is this energy that I can't explain. It's an exciting energy. It's not anything scary. And you can just feel the history around you. You can, I feel like I could bump into a soul at any point, a soul from the 1800s, 1700s. And the history is just so interesting. It's just so, so interesting. And the way that the city is laid out, it it has all these, it's well known for its town squares and they're beautiful town squares. And they break up traffic, which is great, or car traffic. And, um, it's a very walkable city. The downtown area is very walkable. I loved it. I fell in love with it. And the, the cemetery, I forget what the cemetery is called, but there's a, a main cemetery, a, a large cemetery, which is uh, maybe like a 
10, maybe 15 minute car drive from the town center, from the downtown area. And it is a very lovely cemetery. It's it's quite eerie because of the way it looks, um, but it is a very lovely cemetery. And there is a famous book, which became a movie called Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. And I tried reading the book. I'm on chapter three and I've been on chapter three for a year or two and just can't get through it. I'm having a hard time getting through the book. I need to really pick it up again. But I really want to read it because I, I just I love Savannah so much to the point that it's on my list of places I could possibly move to after being in New York City. So Savannah, Georgia, definitely add it to your list if you want to stay in a city, visit a city that has a spooky vibe overall. But it's also just has great food. It has rich history, which contributes to the spooky vibes. It, it's a beautiful looking city. I just am in love with it. There are no major skyscrapers. It's a lot of um, smaller smaller scaled buildings like maybe mostly three to five story buildings oh i just i miss it so much i get emotional thinking about it i know it sounds silly make fun of me all you want but let's go number two my second favorite and again this is in no particular order of favoritism but my second city that i want to mention second location is edinburgh scotland and I know I have some listeners who are in Scotland. So shout out to my listeners in Scotland. Edinburgh is magnificent. Magnificent. And I might have also mentioned this. I think I absolutely mentioned this in my podcast. It is it's similar to Savannah. You just feel feel the history everywhere there's so many old buildings and it's a lot of gothic uh, gothic gothic architecture a lot of um beautiful cobblestone streets and very hilly i remember when i first i, I flew into the Ed, the airport near edinburgh and then i took the like a street car or street train from the airport to the city of edinburgh and I uh, am I pronouncing it right, Edinburgh? Because I've heard it pronounced Edinburgh, which doesn't sound right. I hear most Scottish folks and British folks mention it as name it as Edinburgh, like bruh, Edinburgh. Let me know. I'm sorry. I took the street, the street train, the train from the airport to Edinburgh, and I remember when I got to the stop that I needed to go to, I had to walk up a hill to go to my ho- towards my hotel. And I'm walking up the hill and I see these beautiful, large Gothic spires and, and, and the, the stone on the buildings, it's a little stained and dark, has not darkened over the years because the rain and whatever other things may have aff- affected that. So it's, it's a darker color and it looks spooky. And I love it. I love it. And I remember, I remember, walking towards my hotel, which was in Green Market, the Green Market area. And I think it was called Green Market. And I make a right turn and I see this, I think it's called King Street. What is it called? Actually, I'm going to look it up. Hold on one second. It's this street that I had read. They said it looks like Diagon Alley in Harry Potter. And it absolutely, absolutely does. And they do say that, uh, well, not they say, it is known that J.K. Rowling uh wrote a lot of the first Harry Potter book or the ideas for the Harry Potter books in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I actually went to the cafe or I walked by the cafe where she did a lot of her writing as well as the cemetery where she got a lot of names for characters for the books. So this this is called let's see Victoria Street. Victoria Street is one of the most gorgeous streets I have ever looked at gorgeous and it could it looks like it could be a diagon alley i also want to say jk rowling there's a lot of there are quite a few issues of jk rowling and the things that she says these days i separate i know it's very controversial to say this but i separate the art from the artist harry potter means a lot to me as a former child who felt very validated by harry potter um but she is saying a lot of problematic things so i want to just separate those two things and most people may not like me saying that but i'm comfortable and i am at peace with myself saying that and i can say she is being despicable and i still love harry potter so king street i'm sorry victoria street where did king street come from victoria street like a diagon alley and i stayed in the grass market 
grass market is I stayed in that that part of the city. And I did a tour, I think it was my first night or my second night, I think it was my first night there, of the underground vaults. Let me tell you, that was quite creepy. The underground vaults take you exactly to what they sound like, underground vaults. And it is there that you experience what it was like to live down there. Because there were people who used to live down there, people who were too poor impoverished to live above ground and it is pitch black dark when you turn off your flashlights people died down there it was like a city underground it was very spooky really spooky and fascinating walking through edinburgh it's just it's just so picturesque and um i also got to go to rosslyn chapel which is an hour away from edinburgh and that was really special because i had read the da vinci code growing up and that's a very climactic scene in the book and in the movie when they go to end up at Roslyn Chapel but that's not that didn't feel so spooky but it definitely felt very powerful Roslyn Chapel has a beautiful high vibrational energy that is just so special so if you can go see it go see it I believe it was free if it wasn't free it was a very affordable visit it's just the bus it was the bus ride and maybe the entrance fee if I remember the entrance fee wasn't very expensive at all and it's just so worth seeing um Edinburgh. Edinburgh is amazing. The last place I want to mention, because I have to hop off very soon, is a place you may not ever hear or have heard of ever in your life. And it is quite a random sounding place. I'm actually going to look up the proper name of this location. It's in Palmyra, New York. And... I went because of a work trip. And uh, I think I've mentioned before that I used to do public relations for the Finger Lakes region of New York State. And I got to go on a trip to take a little tour of this of of this region of New York State. And I went to Pal- went through Palmyra New Palmyra, excuse me, New York and I actually stayed for the night. It was a very interesting stay in an old house. But the place that was very haunted, it's called it's officially called Historic Palmyra. It's called the Market Street Historic District. And the most intense energy I have ever felt in a space was at the old general store at the historic Palmyra site. It looks as if, and they'd left everything the way that the owner of that general store left it in the, um, I believe it was, it was abandoned in the early 1900s. I'm not sure, but the buildings were built between eight, the 1830s and 1880s. All the products are left in the general store, medicines, oils, shaving utensils, cooking ware, an old cash register still works. It's as if they just up and left. That's what it felt like. And above the general store is a boarding house that became someone's also someone's home. And going up those stairs into that boarding house slash home, I swear to you, it was me and two or three other people, and I felt like I was in a crowded room. I've never, ever, to this day, been anywhere where I am one of the only people in the room, and it feels like I'm in a crowded group. It was insane. I get semi-chills thinking of it now. Now, this place is in the middle of nowhere in New York State, okay? But if you are really, 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 really serious about haunted places and you want to do a road trip in New York State, you have to stop in Palmyra, New York, and go to the Historic Palmyra website. It's called historicpalmyrany.com and visit this general store and boarding house. It is absolutely bonkers. And, um, I was with some I was with my client so I couldn't say too much about what I was feeling and this was also before I started practicing as a psychic medium or realized I had these abilities but I believed in all this stuff and they told me that there are a lot of paranormal investigations that ghost hunters um the investigators book they book the space to do investigations overnight they stay overnight they have a lot of photographs printed out for guests to look at 
I have I just I can't help but just say over and over again it just felt like there were many people in that place with us and it was only three or four of us there and you get to see a a taste of what it was like to live in the late 1800s early 1900s and uh it is on the national register of historic space uh, places historic places in the new in the sorry the united states and um it's just incredible it's incredible I only got to explore the general store and the boarding house slash home. I didn't get to explore the other buildings or other buildings included in the historic Palmyra site. But if you get a chance to go, please do yourself a favor. If you're a huge ghost junkie and paranormal investigation junkie, go, go, go. I'll see you on the next episode. And I hope you have a great spooky season. And I hope you're having a great spooky season, rather, and hope that we can come back together to celebrate more spookiness in the next two episodes, the last two episodes of the Spooky Specials. Take care. Happy spooking. That was cheesy. Forget I said that. Just enjoy yourself. Awkward. Bye. If you have a question or topic you want me to cover on Third Eye Sight, head to my website, juanfranciscospirit.com slash contact and send a message my way. If you really enjoyed this episode, leave a review wherever you listen. I'd really appreciate it.